This was the scene outside Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's office on Thursday after he revealed the Republicans' new health bill, the one a small handful of Senate men spent weeks concocting in secret. Republicans are calling it an Obamacare repeal bill, but what it really does is devastate Medicaid, the largest health care program in the country, in exchange for a massive tax cut for the rich. Like the House version, the Senate bill would cap federal Medicaid spending for the first time. The CBO hasn't scored the Senate bill yet, but it predicted that the House bill would cut more than $800 billion from Medicaid over 10 years. $800 billion, that's nearly a quarter of the Medicaid program. And again, Republicans want to cut a program that covers 20% of all Americans, a program that covers half of all births in this country, that covers 60% of children with disabilities, and 64% of nursing home residents. A quarter of that program gone. Millions of the most vulnerable Americans left without access to medical care, so Republicans can give enormous tax cuts to the rich. The hundreds of billions of dollars that will be cut from Medicaid would fund hundreds of billions of dollars in tax cuts, 40% of which will go to the richest 1% of Americans. So how can Republicans justify voting for it? Joining me now is Republican Congressman Tom Reed of New York. And Congressman Reed, I do thank you for coming on um, to, to talk about this bill. It's not easy to necessarily get Republicans to come out and, and, and uh, sort of support it. So I want to ask you to tell me how you can justify um, the fact that you have a bill that would cut billions, hundreds of billion dollars of Medicaid to give tax cuts that are as follows. The richest 0.1% would get an average of $207,000. The richest 20% would get even $2,700. And everyone else would get $265. How can you justify cutting health care for the poor and the elderly and children to pay for that? Well, thanks for having me on, Joy, and I, I reject your premise. Uh, what we're doing is reforming Medicaid because your, your premise that spending more money is going to somehow take care of the health the delivery for Americans is just false. W Medicaid is on a path of unsustainability. Medicaid needs to be there. I support Medicaid, and my fellow Republicans do too. But for you to suggest that that's why we're taking on Medicaid is just false. Can you explain what is Medicaid? Explain what Medicaid in your is the, what is the it? backstop it, it, for lower income folks, the folks that are struggling amongst us, our, our colleagues, our peers, our family members, our friends, and making sure that there's a safety net there. I support that. My but, fellow Republicans support that so too. Isn't, isn't what Medicaid is, is money that the federal government provides to states so that they can actually reimburse hospitals to care for the poor. So if there's less money being paid to states to care for the poor, how does that reform the program that is literally based on money to pay hospitals to care for the poor? Because that money is hardworking American taxpayer dollars. That is not an endless pot of money. We're running deficits of a half a trillion dollars, twenty trillion dollars in national debt. It's not sustainable. So you're, so you're, Americans you're saying, who are paying that mm -hmm. bill cannot afford it anymore. So what you're essentially saying is that taxpayers can't afford to pay for health care for the poor, so the poor should simply receive less health care. I mean, that's no. the logical conclusion no. of what you're saying. I want to show you um, no. what the Center for American Progress has. Uh, they've looked at this bill. And they've said that by 2026, 18,000 18, to 27,000 Americans, additional Americans, would, would die. This is based on data showing higher mortality rates for the uninsured. It assumes on the low end, 15 million more people are uninsured in 2026, and on the high end, 23 million. So if you actually take away the money for people to get health care, they can't get health care. So what you're saying essentially is that taxpayers are more important than the sick. No, what I'm saying is we need to make the program sustainable. And what you have to do is change the way we, we do Medicaid and put pressure because we have to be more effective, we have to be more efficient. We've got to reward quality, not fee for service, not expand the service, not reward states for the more they build, the more they get paid. That's how the formulas are now with the sharing of the, of the cost of Medicaid with the states. And so from our perspective, we have to do better. I have to be part of the effort, I believe, to make sure the status quo is not, is not continuing to go forward because that will fail Americans. We need to save this this and fix this so that Americans have access to this safety net that I support and I know my fellow Republicans support. Well, so in, in addition to the fact that you, what you guys are saying is you're going to fix Medicaid by giving it less money, essentially starving it of money and somehow reforming it, when you've talked about, when you yourself and the, your colleagues have talked about this bill, you haven't really talked about reform. Um, I have a memo here. Um, that was put out by the members of the New York delegation, and this is it for people to see, applauding the House proposal that included a provision that one of uh, your colleagues, John Faso, um, got put into the bill. 
And here's what that bill is. Um, from the Buffalo News, GOP health care bill would bar New York from charging upstate counties for Medicaid, meaning no money would come from upstate counties to go into the Medicaid program. You, sir, support the amendment. Um, you praised Mr. Faso for getting that Absolutely. amendment through. And in, in your praise of it, um, you talked only about taxes. You said um, essentially that you've pushed this item for local property taxpayers from the region, um, that Albany as an elected official Faso was very proactive and creative in pushing this item for the local property taxpayers from the region. And Mr. Faso, so when he talked about um, this program, he only talked about the taxes. He tweeted, this new ACHA bill includes my provision to eliminate New York's Medicaid mandate and save New York 19 property taxpayers millions of dollars. So if this is about reforming Medicaid, then why is it that you and your colleagues are only talking about tax cuts? Well, You're praising we tax do, cuts. I've... I wholly support John Faso and Chris Collins' amendment because our property taxpayers here in western New York are leaving in droves because they can't pay their bills. They can't pay their tax bill. They can't take care of their homes. And what we should do is put the, the burden back on the state capital because the state capital controls how this program is delivered at the local level. Right now, New York is one of the only states that puts it on our local taxpayers to foot the bill, and our local governments cannot change the program, cannot provide better services under the program. So from my perspective, this is a a great amendment that needs to be supported and reduce the property taxes to 40 percent. 145 million dollars in my low income areas across this district uh, are going to be relieved of that tax burden. Is your, That's your the right district thing to is, do. is not, from my understanding, is not a low income district. I mean, we're essentially talking about a more affluent district, an affluent district whose oh, no, property, if you put wrong. back up, put back up the FASO tweet because it talks about the amount of money that taxpayers would, would save. And this is what his focus was. Those are pretty significant amounts of tax money, meaning that these are more affluent homeowners. Wouldn't it be more honest to simply say, sir, that what Republicans are trying to do in this bill is essentially say we don't want tax dollars, our tax dollars, to go to pay for low-income health care. We just don't want it to happen. And so it isn't about reform. It is about exactly what you've praised, making sure that taxpayers don't have to pay for low-income health care. That's absolutely false. In my district, the average salary is about $30,000 a year. To say that's affluent, I think is just hogwash, and you don't know the facts. And the bottom line is this, is we're talking about a program that relies upon taxpayer dollars that is unsustainable and that is going bankrupt, and that is crushing our local American taxpayers across the board. We need to do better than that, Joy. I, I'm all about trying to put the pressure where the pressure needs to be. The powers that decide how this program operates and how it's delivered need to bear the pressure and burden of making sure that they're doing it in a most efficient and effective way possible. And you're, you're absolutely right about your district, and it's not affluent taxpayers, so I stand corrected on that. But the point that you're making in your the amendment that you supported is that essentially you are saying that you don't believe that taxpayers should pay for Medicaid, which, by the way, is not going bankrupt. Just empirically, it's actually not going bankrupt. There's no empirical because evidence it has an to support. Pot of money. Yeah. Right. It's not going back. So what you're saying is you want to take the money out of Medicaid. I mean, the, the plain fact here is that this is not about Medicaid reform. You, sir, believe that Medicaid should just receive less money and that it shouldn't be getting its money from, ta from, from property taxpayers, right? Or from taxpayers. No, that's absolutely not correct. It's going to be a taxpayer-funded safety net for American people With that are in low money income in it, having that hard time. Of course, but what you have to do is make sure that you don't reward inefficiency like we do now. This is exactly what the pro problem of the program is. The more they serve, the more, more money they spend, the more money they get from the American taxpayer. We need to change that formula. We need to make sure that the formula rewards doing more with less, not, not encourage us to do more, uh, more ineffective, inefficient delivery of health care. Let's talk specifically about the Medicaid expansion, because this has become, become one of the big sticking points. And this isn't about whether or not Medicaid does more money with less or spends more money. This is literally about adding millions of people just to the eligibility so that they could get it at all. If the Medicaid expansion is rolled back, then those people who fit into the new formula, meaning they were up to, I think, 125% of the poverty rate, they just simply get Medicaid at all. So taking Medicaid away from them, getting rid of the expansion, that means that group of people just doesn't get Medicaid at all. What should happen to those people? How should they get health care? Well, that's exactly. When, when you're talking to people of 100% of the poverty level, level or less, we'll get Medicaid. We'll continue but to get I'm Medicaid. But I'm saying the expansion. You guys want to get rid of the expansion. Above, what above happens poverty, to those people? So they yeah. will no longer get Medicaid. Well, that means they won't have insurance. Well, how do you believe those people yeah. should get health care? 
that is where we have to make sure we design the tax credits, that we design a health care system that is lowering the cost, delivering better outcomes based on lower costs, and get the cost of health care under control so that health insurance costs then go under, con but wait under a minute. control no, but, but, and people but, have access but to health care. Those people would simply not have, I mean, the, the situation they were in before the expansion is that they just simply didn't have a, a policy at all. They didn't have an insurance card to no. go to the doctor. So if you go back to the situation where they don't have an insurance card, more efficiency in the system won't change anything. They just won't have insurance. So how will sure, those people get health care at yeah. all? Uh, absolutely, and that's where the Republican plan puts the tax credits in place to provide but them a resource to purchase health insurance. And the all, whole idea is to get health insurance costs down by getting health care costs under control. But if you that's are at 125 of percent of poverty, you don't get tax credits. You're generally somebody who gets a tax refund at the end of the year. These are not people who are itemizing deductions and can get a tax credit. Oh, You're talking about no, no, people no. who it, are 125 percent of the poverty level. That's actually not a lot of money. No, actually, Joy, Joy, that's absolutely wrong. These are advanceable, refundable tax credits where folks get them up front, that these go to the carriers to relieve the premium costs that they're going to be uh, absorbing in that expansion policy. So as we phase out of Medicaid expansion, that is the backstop upon which we're replacing it with. So you're essentially, just so that we understand what you guys want to do, you essentially want to give a very substantial tax cut. In your case, you don't want the taxpayers in your districts to fund Medicaid at all. You're essentially rolling that back, making it unlawful for your taxpayers in your district to fund Medicaid at all. Cut overall the cost of Medicaid, meaning Medicaid just gets less money, and then just give individual people tax credits. That's the plan. Well, that's the, the fundamental essence of what we're trying to do is empower people rather than expanding government to a point where it's not sustainable. American taxpayers can't put this bill uh, endlessly and without a, a limitation because they're, they're tapped out. All right. Well, I, I'm sorry. One second. We have a guest here who is, who is whispering to me in my ear that she wanted to ask you a question. I'm going to do something a little bit unusual. I want to let one of my guests in because I do think she has a question for you. Tara Dowdell, um, you seem to have a question for the congressman. And congressman, if you don't mind, I just want to let her ask that question. Well, the tax credits are less under the Senate bill. So they're being they're lowered. So while you're taking away Medicaid for those people, they won't be eligible for the same level of tax credits that they would have been eligible for before. So you're and giving. That's why so this they're going to get less. Process. Well, because where we're going to end up, they still have to do their amendment process. Our, our tax bill and our, our credits in the House were based primarily on age. Uh, the Senate took a step in the right direction, in my opinion, when you in incorporate income into that equation. And income has got to be the cornerstone, I think, going forward. And that's a sweet spot, I think, to get this to the finish line. So then, so you're acknowledging the fact that for those people who uh, are not going to be eligible for Medicaid anymore, that the tax credit that they receive is less, which will put a greater financial burden on them uh, in terms of purchasing I I insurance. Well, no, no, no. They will have a tax. They will have access to a tax credit that they could then access themselves to purchase the insurance that yeah. works for them. So we, well, we, no, it's not lower. It's a, it's a different way of getting health care, rather through government, through government, as they actually through themselves as individuals. I think we understand where you're going with this. That essentially you want people to essentially, it, it is a rollback of Medicaid. It's a raw de a decrease. But I want to just fi finally ask you this question in the end. Uh, do you stand by, in the end, the idea uh, that the wealthiest people in this country, as a result of this bill, if it is signed into law, will get a tax cut that if they are in the richest 1% is actually more than the average income in your district. So the average very wealthy person is going to get $37,230 back, and at least 20 million people will actually have no health care coverage. In your view, is that a fair trade-off to get an Obamacare repeal enacted into law? It, it, there's no doubt, I believe, in uh, reducing the American tax burden, and that includes what we've done here in this bill. And at the end of the day, you know who foots the bill is hardworking Americans that are paying the costs where those taxes are assessed back to. And at my, from my perspective, anything we can do to alleviate tax burdens is in the right direction for the America's future. Okay, I think you have made it very clear. Tom, Congressman Tom Reed, thank you so much for coming and doing this. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate the debate. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you very much. And when we come back, Tara and the rest of my panel weighs in. You don't want to miss it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.